With the summer solstice only a few days away, the nights are long and bright here in Scotland. Perfect for getting out and enjoying nature. That's exactly what I'm doing this week as I head out to a quiet spot in the countryside to photograph damselflies and ask you some thought-provoking questions which may help to add more fun and enjoyment to your photography. Well, welcome back to nature on what has turned out to be an absolutely scorching week here in Scotland. We've had temperatures of over 30 degrees the last few days, which is almost unheard for for Scotland. We're not used to it and being out during the day has been incredibly uncomfortable. But I'm not complaining, I love the sun and it's great to still get out and embrace it, particularly on evenings. And that's exactly what I'm doing this evening. I've come out to this beautiful spot in nature and it is so quiet, so peaceful. I have it completely to myself and I've got the beautiful evening light streaming through. Now, the reason I've come here tonight is because a couple of days ago, I was here photographing damselflies in the midday sun and I got some beautiful images. And I know they're most active during the daytime in the sun, but I was hoping with the hot weather and the sun that we've still got this evening, that they might have still been active so I could get some images of them in different lighting conditions. But since arriving here, I've only seen one. So it does look like they've gone to, to bed for the evening. But you know me, I'm not one to give up. So we'll see if any do appear. And if not, let's see what other opportunities await me this evening as I get my macro lens out and connect with nature once more. One thing I always encourage you guys to do when you come onto a location is to sit down and immerse yourself in that location, connect with it, look around you and see what speaks to you. And one thing I didn't do this evening was do that for myself. I did go for a little bit of a walk around this pond, but I didn't stop and fully connect with the location. And since doing that, just sitting or sort of kneeling by the pond, pond's edge here, I've just seen two damselflies. So there's nowhere near as many as there was the other day, but there are still a few going around. It wasn't just damselflies I noticed though. There were so many beautiful things to see. The angle of the sunlight hitting the water resulted in the water's movement being reflected onto these plant stems, which I found truly mesmerizing. How the wind was moving these reed-like structures around created beautiful movements around me and the reflections combined with the flies hitting the water's surface made for some tiny ripples in the water. But of course, it was the damselflies I was here to photograph and that is what was really exciting me. But before we move on to what I may get this evening, I thought it'd be exciting to show you some of the images I was managed to create a couple of days ago to give you an idea of why I was so excited about coming back here this evening. I'm still relatively new to macro photography, but the more I do it, the more I'm falling in love with it. And these images here could be some of my favorite creations so far. The final one here of the flies mating made me squeal when I saw it. I photographed a few different angles, but this one I felt worked best. With these images still fresh in my mind, I was excited and optimistic for this evening's venture. But the lack of damselfly activity and the harsh side light was making creating images challenging. I decided to focus on the two damselflies that were active though and initially came away with these images here. I'd like to add, no colour changes or saturation was added to these images. The green-yellow colour really was this vibrant. say I'm finding being out here this evening very very challenging. Now I knew the lighting conditions were going to be different tonight of course. We've got the sun 
becoming a side light. We've got very harsh shadows and very harsh highlights, a lot of contrast. The, the colors are much more muted and I'm really seeing that in my images. And it's interesting because, you know, they often say that photographing in the midday sun for pretty much any, any genre of photography is not the optimum time. But I'm finding for photographing these damselflies, actually photographing them in the midday sun, it was great because as you saw, the vibrancy of the blues and reds on, on their bodies were really being illuminated by the sun. And this evening with this kind of harsh, harsh side light, we're getting much more gloomier, moodier images, much more contrast. There's not the same happy, vibrant feel. And of course, those colors are not shining through the same either. But I just think it's really interesting to note this. Coming out to the same location at different times of day, in different weather conditions, different moods, different lights, and playing around with the same subject matters, you'll get completely different images, completely different moods, completely different emotions, and it's about working out what you prefer. And for me personally, I think I prefer photographing these in the midday sun because of that vibrancy. But of course, maybe I'll change my mind when I get home and look at these on the computer. But it's a good thing, I think, to share there. Is there really an optimum time of day for photography? Or is the optimum time of day the light, the conditions, the weather and the mood that you personally like and enjoy the best? Because that's what photography is all about. It's about your personal connection to nature. And this time of day, the evening and the summer, is some of my favourite times of the year. I love the warm summer nights with the sunshine, the glorious orange sunsets and the beautiful contrast in the landscape. But actually for this style of photography, I'm not quite liking it as much, but it's fun to experiment with. Find your own photographic style, play around, get out when you can. You know, coming out today in the midday sun was not a good idea. It was far, far too hot. And even right now in the evening, you know, it's, it's like eight o'clock at night and it's still 27 degrees. Very, 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 very unusual and rare for Scotland. And even right now, it still feels a little bit too warm. But hey, let's stay out for another half an hour or so, maybe even an hour, and just see if these damselflies will stick around and whether any of the upcoming images will be a bit more easier and more colorful to photograph. Not long after filming this piece de camera, as I sat by the edge of the pond, the two damselflies began to come closer. I was finding focusing on them in the harsh side light a challenge, but these images here, I really did love. I mean, just look, the tiny intricate hairs on this one. And the sun did a great job at allowing them to shine. And this one here, I just thought was really cute. Just look at him, adorable eyes. this video today by sharing something that will maybe get you to think a little bit about your photography and it's come from a book that I'm reading at the moment called The Happiness Project and it's about this woman who did a lot of research into what makes people happy and every month she dedicated her life to implementing things into her life that have scientifically been proven and that people have shared with her that make them happy. And one of the, in the chapter I've just finished, it speaks about adding more play into your life. And by play, what I'm talking about is things that you enjoy doing, that you just do for fun. And she realized actually that by making sure she made time for play, it actually made the rest of her life more easier to deal with. And there's been a lot of studies done into this that, that really showcase this. You know, if you spend a lot of your life just running around doing the essentials and you don't make time for play, it can be really quite detrimental on your health in many ways, but it also prevents you sometimes from being able to cope with the stresses of life. But if you can take some time out to do something you love, whatever that may be, drawing, painting, jigsaws, poetry, puzzles, or photography, of course, which is probably the answer for most of you watching this. If you take that time out and go out with your camera for half an hour or an hour or however long you may have, 
it resets you and then when you go back home or go back to work or go back to dealing with the stresses of, of everyday life, you can deal with them more because you've had that time to reset. And I wanted to share this this evening because this evening has really reminded me about this. Now, of course, YouTube is partly part of my job and I'm filming this video, but I do it because I genuinely enjoy it. And this evening, I just felt like I wanted to get out. I wanted to embrace this beautiful summer evening. I wanted to come back to this spot, which I was at a couple of days ago, purely for fun. I didn't film a video. I just came here to play with my camera and photograph a subject I never photographed before. I realised both on that day and right now sitting here how much more energised I feel, how much more relaxed I feel and how much more able I now feel to have a nice night's sleep and get more work and the essentials of life done. So I just wanted to end this video by saying to you, as a photography lover, do you make time for your photography regularly? Do you make time for play? Play with your photography the creative fun, just going out for the enjoyment of it and resetting yourself. We spoke about that in well, the last video, I think, and even the video before that, about this idea of creative rest. And it's something that I'm becoming more and more aware of and I'm wanting to inspire you all to, to implement into your life because this idea of creative rest, it's so rejuvenating, it's so important and it really does make a difference. So if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed just now with life, pick up your camera and head outdoors. Even if it's only for 10 minutes in your garden, just take your camera, do some mindful photography or go to a location that you know you love or you've always wanted to go to and just do photography for fun. See what you can create. Just like I've done this evening, I had no idea if the damselflies were going to be out there was two, very challenging to photograph them, but I've thoroughly enjoyed the experience. And I hope that this video has inspired you to do something like this for yourself this coming week. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday.